Welcome to the Palaha Chautauqua. It is Sunday and we are going live uh, with you. I am going live with you. And um, man, if I could just play the guitar the whole time, how fun would that be? Um, so, let's get started, shall we? Today we're going to talk about goodness. We have been talking about so many wonderful things over the past few weeks. Um, we have talked about forgiveness. We have talked about having peace in our lives and what that looks like. We've talked about having patience. Last week we talked about kindness and how amazing was it that it was World Kindness Day the other day and so there was just so much happening about kindness. So it was easy for all of us here at the Palau Chautauqua University. No, Palau Chautauqua, uh, just, to, um, just to kind of focus on kindness. And this week we're going to get into goodness. So for goodness sake... Let's do, uh, let's do it. Let's see, let's see how it's going so far. I just am curious. Um, I always want to check in. So Anne was the first person to jump on today. Um, and we got Debbie and 61 Moose One and Miss Daigles and Darlene Christie. We got a bunch of folks here. Sherry 60, Sherry P65 is here again. Hello. Um, I love this community and you guys have, you guys being a part of it uh, has been a really interesting experiment in being an actor and being a human being and a father and a husband and a guy, but then also being a part of this this social media sort of community of people that I don't know you guys other than through um, your icons and, and through your continued kind of um, personalities online. And I got to say, it's very interesting to me. It's a really interesting social experiment. Um, and I feel like in this world that we're living in, especially with COVID-19 running around the face of the earth and it's starting to heat up again. So please wear your mask outside. Uh, just wear a mask and keep your distance. And it's okay to play the game. And I know that we have to get back to work and I know that life has to continue. Um, but, you know, when I'm at work, like I look like an idiot because I've got all sorts of stuff and I wash my hands all the time and I'm just, I'm taking every uh, precaution not to get sick, but also not to get people sick. And so just do that as, as we see this, um, the COVID-19 just really tearing through uh, both Canada and the States again. Um, yeah, people are, there's a lockdown in the UK, there's a lockdown in Canada. I mean, America, um, I think we should lock down in different ways there, but again, I'm not in charge of things, so it's not my place to, I can tell you all sorts of opinions that I have, but I don't think anyone cares about this. I do, though, want to talk to you today about goodness. Um, goodness. Are you guys ready to get into it? If you're ready to get into goodness, give me some hearts. Give me some love here on the, on the thing. We got it. There we are. We're ready. All right, so all week long, I've been thinking how to tackle the idea of goodness without falling in the trap of creating a list of good behavior and bad behavior and creating this sense of condemnation if you fall in the bad behavior and a sense of superiority if you fall into the superiority uh, column. So this hour is not gonna be judgy about how you live your life, whether life choices are bad or good. So just stay with me for the next hour as we dive into goodness. And I wanna look at it from all sorts of different perspectives, okay? And of course, we're going to start with the meaning of the word goodness. So defined by Webster's, uh, it says uh, the quality of being morally good or virtuous. And it gives us an example, a belief in the basic goodness of mankind. Well, that's all good and well, Webster's Dictionary. But what the heck does good mean? We're trying to figure out what goodness is and you can't use the same word in the same in the definition. So if goodness is going to describe if goodness is being described as good, then what is good defined as? And good defined, here's where it gets a little, here's where it gets a little tricky for us. So good is defined as to be desired or approved of as a good quality of life, which if you've got a brain in there, which I know we all do, opens the door to relative morality because it's good a matter of opinion. One person's good, maybe another person's heaping pile of shit, stains, excuse the French, and also, we live in this world where a lot of very bad things come out of very good places or bad people or bad things are done by very good people. So that's kind of a confusing thing. Um, I want to talk about Thomas Hobbes today, too. 
which I'll get to because he is a relativist. And he's saying that everything we do is an act of survival. And he believes in sort of this innate, sort of that human nature is bad by nature, bad by nature, because if left unchecked, we would just kind of take what we need. Um, but, I'll, but we'll get to him in a second. So good is also defined as pleasing uh, and welcome, as in she was pleased to hear the good news about him. It's also expressing approval, like, yeah, good to hear. I uh, have, you know, that was good reviews. Um, we have qualities required for a particular role. So it's a good school, um, which then we have a definition, that which is morally right or righteous, the mysterious balance of good and evil here in the Webster's Dictionary. So here we're starting to put a little spiritual spin on the word good, which is spiritual meaning. Uh, the benefit or advantage to someone or something. So he convinces his father the use to use his genius for the good of mankind. So to benefit or advantage to someone or something. And then finally, good means to be well. Um, so guys, think about it this way. Good often gets broken down in comparison with with. If there's something good, there's something bad. So we have good milk in the refrigerator, or that good milk can go bad and it becomes sour and stinky. There's a good road versus a bad road. There's good weather versus bad weather. Um, there is uh, There are good movies versus bad movies. Um, there are good dogs versus bad dogs. So by that, what I'm understanding is that things have a purpose. So there's milk in the refrigerator, and if it's good, then I can drink it. The minute it goes bad, I'm gonna throw it away. If the dog is good, he can come in the house and be with my kids, but if the dog is bad, we have to figure out a new place for him. If the road is good, we can travel on it. If the road is bad, we can't travel on the road. If the waves are good, you ride them. If the waves are bad, either you don't go in the water, or if they're too bad, then you will get hurt if you go in the water. So then what does it mean to be a good person? When we have good kids, good we have good kids, bad kids, that's because they're behaving in a way that we want them to behave as parents. They're either being quiet and minding us, or they're not, so they're good or bad. Um, but what does it mean to be a good person? You, as an adult, sitting here watching of your own volition, you have choices to make every day. And what makes you good and what makes you bad? So I did a little digging. And I looked at Plato in the Republic, and he talks about just things. For example, a pen. A pen can be a just pen or an unjust pen. That means that this pen, this uh, uni-ball, vision, fine ink point pen, has a purpose. And the purpose is to write anything I want it to write. And I want it to write smoothly, and I want it to not be blotchy, and it would really be great if the ink didn't smudge when I ran my hand over it. So... The pen is either a good pen or a bad pen. It's just, it has a purpose. And by Plato's definition, if it fulfills that purpose, then it is a just erite. It, 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 it hits this idea of erite or excellence. Uh, Plato uses pruning shears as an example. So if there's shears that do their job. They prune, they do everything that they're supposed to do. They are good, just shears. So then if we think about it in that, in that term, then what is our purpose? So we've been talking about forgiveness, forgiving one another, because usually someone's done something bad to us, we need to forgive them of that, or we've done something bad and we need forgiveness. And so then we, we seek forgiveness or we go in towards and we, and we do the forgiving um, and we release somebody from the feeling that the bad thing has caused us to have. Um, and then I was talking about a sense of peace and the idea of what does it mean to have that overwhelming peace that surpasses all understanding? And usually that's a good feeling. Um, and usually when you're having a moment of peace, it leads to good things because then you're not feeling anxious. You're not feeling hasty. You're not feeling um, upset. And so you're just taking your time and you're settled in and you're looking at all of your options and you're weighing them and you're making good choices. Um, we talked about patience, again, going back to being hasty or upset very easily, like having patience allows you to sit in your pocket and just kind of wait, actively wait for the right thing, the good thing. Um, and then we talked about kindness last week and being kind. It was interesting. Bunty Fox said, I just do things. I just do things. I just am kind. And, um, and some people are kind by nature and they go out of their way or they don't even have to go out of their way. They're just doing kind things. But some people have to go out of their way to do kind things or do good, to do good things. And, and 
there I think we have to start defining it. a kind thing is a good thing, but a kind thing is is good in the sense that it's, they're not one and the same. Kind is good because it's a good thing, because it's a kind thing. I'm not making sense, but do you understand what I'm saying? Give me hearts if you understand what I'm saying. Kind and good are separate in the sense that kind is kind, but it leads to good. A kind thing is a good thing, but it isn't one and the same. So then we're here talking about well, what is good. Chris, what are you going on about, bro? What is good? So let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. The purpose. How do we then, like Plato, how do we fulfill our purpose as humans to be good humans? What is our purpose? We're here on Earth. COVID is reminding us that we are here for a short time, so it's brief. So how do we fulfill the purpose of being good? Uh, great thinkers and philosophers have been asking this question for thousands of years. Thomas Hobbes, he says a quote, moral philosophy is nothing else but the science of what is good and evil. And in the conversation and society of mankind, good and evil are names that signify our appetites, our aversions, which in different tempers, customs, and doctrines of men are different. Thomas Hobbes also believes that government is necessary not because man is naturally bad, but because man is by nature more individualistic than social. And he goes on to talk about, I have all this stuff printed up. He goes on to talk about good and evil are dependent on what the individual loves so that, that basically if I want what you have, I can take it, survival of the fittest. And then he's saying, but, but if there's a strong man who takes what he wants, the group will then rise up to understand what's good for the group, overcome the strong man, and then they'll have a society. So that we're basically always striving towards a goodness. But what he did say, what I want to repeat, is that good and evil are names that signify our appetites and aversions, which in different tempers, customs, and doctrines of men are different. So if something is good right now, it may not be good 10 years from now, or there could be a society of people thinking they're doing something good, which is actually, in fact, not good at all. So how do we define good? Where is our standard of good? What I'm trying to do right now is confuse you that your good may not be good enough, that your good might, in fact, if you're a German in Nazi Germany in 1943, and you think you're doing good by the state, is in fact killing six million people. Or, I mean, so the good, the question of good and bad uh, that's, it really does become this thing like kindness, it's pretty cut and dry. You can be kind. You know what kindness is. You know what it feels like. You can be patient. We're going to talk about self-control. We're going to talk about love and joy. We're going to talk about thankfulness and faithfulness. These things are kind of, but good gets very tricky. Um, so, if you are going to be good and having a full expression of the human experience. We better figure out what it means to be good at being alive. So what does it mean, friends, who are watching right now? What does it mean to be good? Um, let's take a look at the good book, shall we? Because I like going there. You know that about me. And I'm going to start by reading something um, in the beginning. So... Bear with me, guys. I'm going to read you a creation story, okay? And if, you, if you're not familiar with the Judeo-Christian narrative, this is Genesis. It's Genesis 1. It's what the, 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 Jew, the Jewish people and the Christians, this is how we think that the world, all of creation got started. Um, every, every sort of civilization has its own uh, creation story, which is interesting to me. And some of them run similarly. So here, uh, first this, God created the heavens and the earth. All you see and all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light, and light appeared. And God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day, and he named the dark night. In the evening, it was evening, it was morning, day one. God spoke sky in the middle of the waters, and they separate, separate water from water. God made sky. He separated the water under the sky from the water above sky. And there it was. He named the sky heavens. It was evening. It was morning. Day two. 
God spoke, separate, water beneath heaven, gathered into one place, land appear, and there it was. God named the land earth. He named the pooled water ocean. God saw that it was good. God spoke, earth, green up, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree, and there it was. Earth produced green, green seed-bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. And it was evening, it was morning, day three. God spoke, lights, come on, shine in heaven's sky, separate day from night, make seasons and days and years, light in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights, the larger to take charge of the day, the smaller to be in charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in their heavenly sky to light up the earth and oversee day and night to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning, day four. God spoke swarm ocean with fish and all sea life birds fly through the air uh, through the sky over the earth god created huge whales and the swarm of life in the waters and every kind of species and flying bird god saw that it was good god blessed them uh, pr uh, prosper reproduce fill ocean birds reproduce on earth it was evening it was morning day five god spoke earth generate life every life and of sort of kind every sort and kind cattle and reptiles and wild animals all kinds and there it was wild animals of every kind cattle of all kinds every sort of reptile and bug god saw that it was good God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and the birds in the air and every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food, to all animals and all birds. Everything that moves and breathes, I give you whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good. So very good. It was evening. It was morning, day six. And then he rests. So here we have the very, very first reference to what it means to be good. Um, to be pleasing, worthy, filling its purpose, being good. In Romans 8.28, it says, We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. So again, um, hey guys, it says here you're frozen maybe. You can still hear me, but everything is frozen. Well, hang in there with me if you can still hear me. Um, so again, that goes to the idea that no matter what has happened to you in your life, no matter how bad things have gotten or what bad things have been done to you, that God can work this out for good. Um, God can turn your lead into gold, your ugliness to beauty, your bad to good. And then in Luke 18, 19, Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So here's where it gets very Christian tonight. This is where it gets, this is where it takes a turn to the Christian narrative. Um, in the Christian narrative, only God is good. And Christians believe that Jesus is God incarnate when he died on the cross for all of us. And if we accept that gift, if we believe that story, then we are washed by that singular and decisive act we are made good. And once we're made good, then we need to practice good. My dad says something to me all the time. He says, Christopher, your thoughts are the grandfathers of your actions. So by that logic, my thoughts happen first. And then the daddy of the, the words, the, my, my daddy words come out. And I start sort of saying what I'm thinking. And then eventually I start doing what I'm thinking. So by that, if I can control my thoughts, and I can control my words, I'll have control over what I do. So that's an interesting thing. One is a gift, the goodness of being washed by that acceptance of the story, by the acceptance of grace that God provides, that forgiveness. That's the gift. I don't do anything for that. But then after, once I'm cleaned up, and once I'm good and made good, then I have to start practicing that. So what does that look like? Um... 
I'm going to read you guys another thing out of the book. And I, you guys, just so you know, I read out of something. I know it's backwards, but it's called The Message. And it's by Eugene H. Peterson. And I just like it. I think it's a cool translation. I think it's relatable. Um, I give it to, I have a couple copies and I toss them around. This, I'm going to read you guys something else. It's a little long, so bear with me. Okay? And um, it's James 3, when you open your mouth. So this goes, this is speaking to the idea of, well, what does it mean to be good? Like, what does it mean that I'm doing thoughts, words, actions? So here we go. I'm speaking to that right now. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher. <laughs> this is talking to me right now with this Chautauqua. My friends, teaching is a highly responsible work. Teachers are held to be to the strictest standards and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. I'm going to say that one more time. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony into chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer, with our tongues, we bless God, our Father. With the same tongues, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? So you can't have fresh water and salt water come out of the same fountain. Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? Do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. It is the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean spirit and ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourselves sound wise isn't wisdom. It is the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning, devilish conniving. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at each other's throats. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with each other. It is gentle and reasonable and overflowing with mercy and blessings. Not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. I'm halfway through. Hang with me. Where do, all, where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourselves. You lust for what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. You want what isn't yours and will risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to. You're spoiled children, each wanting your own way. You're cheating on God. If all you want is your own way, flirting with the world every chance you get, you end up enemies of God and His way. And do you suppose God doesn't care? The proverb has it that He is a fiercely jealous lover. And what He gives in love is far better than anything else you'll find. It's common knowledge that God goes against the willful proud. God gives grace to the willing humble. So let God... 
work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before your God. It's the only way you'll ever get on your feet. Don't badmouth each other, friends. It's God's word, his message, his royal rule that takes a beating in that kind of talk. You're supposed to be honoring the message, not writing graffiti all over it. God is in charge of deciding human destiny. And who do you think you are to meddle in the destiny of others? Woo! <laughs> Guys, that's a pretty stern... Uh, uh, this is just... What does it mean, our purpose, to be good? Right? And it's just getting along with others. That's what it means to be good. To get along with others. When you go to work, there's that person. They piss you off. How do you, using kindness and patience and peace and self-control, how do you have a, a, a goodness towards that person? To be gentle and reasonable and to get along with that person. So that is my challenge for you this week. That is, that is our test to define the purpose of goodness. We are all called to be good in different ways, you know? See, here's me. I swear like a sailor. If you were to be at work with me, you'll hear me drop the F-bomb. You'll hear me say bad words. Does that make me bad? I don't think it does. It allows me to talk to people who may not otherwise hear what I have to say on set or in the world. It allows me to kind of, I can, I know when not to swear, like I don't swear here, but I know when I can use it. So, um, I'm also someone who enjoys the occasional Guinness or a glass of whiskey. You know, I don't, I'm not a drunk. I don't sleep myself to drink myself to sleep every night, but I enjoy, I certainly enjoy having a good time with my friends, my family. Again, it makes me accessible. Is that bad? I have a wicked sense of humor, you know? And it, sometimes it literally can, it can be so dry um, that it tilts into the naughty or the wicked. Like it's a, you know, is that, there's, is that bad? I don't think so. I'm an actor in Hollywood, California. I make movies for a living. Uh, I have to tell stories that have nothing to do with who Christopher Palaha is. And you're going to see this body do things on camera that I would never do in real life. Is that bad? I don't think it is. Because I think that so much good has come from so many surprising people who work in Hollywood. I have done bad things. Am I bad? No. And that goes for you guys. So that's another reason why I love the Christ narrative. Anything I think I did that was bad or that I feel guilty or that I feel shame over, I just take it right to the cross. I say, Jesus, forgive me for that. And boom, he forgives me. And it's kind of an amazing thing. It gives me the freedom to start again so that I can be good to myself and so that I can be good to you. So as we move into the week, my first, my first little act of encouragement to you guys in this community is watch what you say, watch what you think, watch what you do. How do we start to, and again, we're going to have self-control. We're going to talk about this later, but how do we start to control and take every thought into captivity? And how do we start to practice good behavior? How do we get along with each other? We've got to watch what we say. We can't gossip about people. And we certainly can't judge each other. You know, we're not the judges of what is good. I don't know. I can't judge your lifestyle. I can't judge who you are, who you think you want to be. I can't judge anything about you. I'm not the judge of you. You're not the judge of me. We are not the judges of each other. And I think a part of being good uh, is acknowledging that, that, that we're not in control of anything. So let's just sit back and be nice to each other along the way. Be gentle and kind and good to each other. Um, because I think that all of us in our hearts know when we're acting good and we know when we're not. So I read from the Bible. I'm going to read you something from Dalai Lama and then I'm going to open it up straight to you guys. The Dalai Lama says, this is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. Our own brain, our own heart is our temple. The philosophy is kindness. To that, 
We know when we're being good. We know when we're being good. We know when we're being honest. We know when we're being right. Um, uh, Micah, I'm going to go back to the Bible, Micah 6, 8. My, the, so we named our son after this prophet. It says very clearly, God told you what is good, what the Lord requires of you. Do justice, love kindness or mercy, and to walk humbly with God. And when I say God, I mean the source. I mean the source of our life because we're all on this ride together and it's a huge mystery. And I have a list of philosophers. You want to hear them? I'm going to give you a list of big, big, fun, fancy names. Aquinas, Aristotle, Augustine, Berkeley, Confucius, Descartes, Douglas, uh, Hobbes, Hume, Kant, Kierkegaard, Lao Locke, Marx, Mill, uh, Pascal, Plato, Rand, Russell, Schopenhauer, Socrates, Thetes, philosophers the world over are trying to figure out the meaning of life. And no one has cracked it. No one has the code. This book that I read from really is an amazing source of wisdom and direction and purpose. Um, and i got to be honest with you. I don't care if you're a Christian or not. You should read it. Because everyone reads everything anyway. It's funny how people are like, oh, I'm going to read that. Um, everyone should read it because it's got a lot to offer for everybody. Um, so then for this very reason, make every effort. This is second Peter one, five for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness and to goodness, knowledge and to knowledge, self-control and to self-control, perseverance and to perseverance, godliness and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Woo! We're on fire on the Palaha Chautauqua tonight, yo! It's Sunday night, and we are talking about it. Albert Einstein said, any fool can know. The point is to understand. This guy right here, Buddha, he says... Conquer the angry man by love. Conquer the ill-natured man by goodness. Conquer the miser with generosity. And conquer the liar with truth. So an ill-natured person with goodness. Um, to talk goodness is not good. Only to do it is. And then finally Schopenhauer talks about the animals. Compassion for animals is intimately connected with goodness of character. And it may be confidently asserted that he who is cruel to animals cannot be a good man. So... Guys, I just loaded, I just did a huge download on goodness. And, oh my gosh. Hey, Julianne, are you there? Will you hand me my little, um, is my book right up there? No, oh, never mind. I had my little goodness sign, but I don't have it right now. The thing that I was going to hold, that I drew. Anyway, it's fine. I'm going to go to you guys. Enough of me. Let's do this. Boom. Who do we have? Uh, uh. <laughs> Let's see what Jojo's got to say about goodness. I'm waiting for Jojo, the asshole. That's her tie. That's her handle. Jojo's a friend of mine. We work together. All right, Jojo, I'll come back to you. Uh, 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 uh. All right, Vicky, I'm going to come to you, Vicky, who's in Scotland right now. Let's hear what Vicky has to say. Hi, Hi Vicky. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm fine. I love your accent. It's awesome. What part of Scotland are you <laughs> Thank from? You. Uh, Coat Bridge, just outside of Glasgow. Glasgow. Oh my gosh. I went to Edinburgh uh, two years ago and it was like such beautiful country up there. It's amazing, isn't it? Scotland's gorgeous. Um, okay, so you have found quite a home in the Palaha Chautauqua community and you came on a oh, love it. ago. You having fun with it? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Um, and you came on a couple of weeks ago, and you were going to tell us a story. You got cut off. But question for you. Do you have something that you want to say about goodness? Like, what are your thoughts on the rant that I just had? <laughs> I actually quite loved it. Um, I'm not a religious person, but it's quite nice to hear all the kind of religious things. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I'm kind of more spiritual than religious, but I'm not against religion. Yeah, I mean, again, it's funny. Like, I'm not necessarily for it in the, in the sense of um, of um, organized, controlled. Uh, but I, I like it's interesting when you mention that you're spiritualist. Like, what does that mean to you? To me, I believe in angels. Um, I believe in ghosts. Um, I believe in healing and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I just kind of have faith, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I really believe in. I just have faith. Yeah, but you feel like there is some unseen force in the universe that 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 yeah. is at least paying attention on whether it's like. God or it's angels or whatever it is. There's something there. I I don't know what it is. I just have faith that it's there. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you, like, do you agree with the idea that we're made for goodness, that we can be good and we can be, or not? I think everybody has the potential for good and evil inside them, and it's their choice at the end of the day. Um, like, two people can, bro uh, sorry, okay. two people can be brought up in the same circumstances and have two completely different paths. Yeah. Because one decides oh like this has happened to me I don't have any choice and the other one says well I grew up this way so I'm going to do everything not to be like that it's interesting yeah um so I think like um to me goodness is um like being able to empathize with people and doing things for no gain like no ulterior motive you don't get anything out of it it's doing something because it's the right thing to do like not that. because you get anything for from it or for it. Yeah, I like that. But one thing I will say is I think sometimes in life you have to be able to say no and you have to be selfish sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't fill your own cup up, you can't fill other people's cups up. I think do you know what I mean? Important. Absolutely. I do. I agree with you on that. And I think a lot of people, but have, no. um, sometimes people I find have trouble knowing when to say, like, no, I can't say no to people. Yeah. Like, I've learned during this lockdown, I've had no choice but to say no to people. And it's been really good because the choice has been taken away from me. Because I, I find it really hard. I can't say no to people. I, I just kind of jump and do things, even if I don't have the time or the energy or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of been nice to have a reason that I don't have that choice. It's yeah. took out my hands. Yeah, I think it's also how you say no to people, right? Like that makes a difference. Yeah. Like there's a good way to say no. And there's also like a, you know, get out of here. <laughs> there's a F off, I'm not doing that for exactly. you. And then there's exactly. like, um, like I, I really can't do it. I have a question for you regarding, regarding this community. Um, are you finding how, when I talk about the Christian narrative and when I talk about like how I see the world, because I'm not doing it to like, I mean, I'm just it's doing it. it's just my perspective. And I, and I feel like as an actor, um, it doesn't like, how is it? How do you how does it rub you? Like, how does it? How does it affect you? Is it okay? Is it too much? Is it too little? Like, what is it? How does it make you feel? I, I don't find it preachy at all. I find it like it's your experience and the things that you believe in and you're sharing that. Um, it's the same as anybody sharing anything that's personal to them that they feel is their kind of truth their story what they think how they think why they got to that thought process if yeah. you know what i mean cool okay cool so just i think it's quite it's quite interesting because it's one thing i don't tend to read the bible i don't tend to read kind of passages that you read out yeah so when you read them out i'm like oh what's that and i kind of listen more and get really into it and now i want to buy that book that's cool Good. There you go. Um, all right, Vicky. Well, I wish you well. I know that you um, uh, are. Do you are you are you dealing with health stuff? Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, four different diseases, which is fun. So I'm kind of in full shielding lockdown right now. So we're not leaving the house. Yeah. OK, well, then I'm just going to pray that you are safe and healthy and that you just hang in there and that you uh, thank you continue to uh, I'll send good thoughts and good vibes your way to good. OK. And then go to sleep. And to everybody in the group. <laughs> yeah. Good. Nice to talk to you again. You as well. Thank you. Bye. 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 That girl. Um, 
Okay. Now, let's see. All right. Mary Moore, 604. I'm sending in a, a request to you. Um, I don't know that we've spoken, Mary. Well, hello there, Chris. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. I'm I'm really, really good, Chris. And I'm glad that I'm finally on here to talk to you. And I yeah. agree with goodness. I I try. I really do. Sometimes it's very hard not to do that. But I do try to be, you know, good to my family and good to friends and good to other people that need that. Because we do need that, especially the world we're living in now. We need goodness. Yes. We need that love. We need that compassion. We need that care for other people. Uh, sometimes there's people out there that just don't want it and they shoo you away because they say, no, I'm this way because I'm, that's just how I am. But I feel that people should be good. If somebody's really good to you, I feel that you should show that goodness back to them. Sure. Yeah. And Absolutely. you should love people for the way they are and love your family for the way they are and just try and show that goodness all the time if you can. Thank you, Mary. I love that. I think that's good. Um, yeah, especially when people aren't showing you goodness, right? Like sometimes right, you gotta, like, exactly. dig in extra. When you show goodness, like give me an example of something you do to show goodness to people, like, what, what do you do that's good? Well, I usually try to say something very nice, like if somebody's feeling down and they're not feeling well, like, for the day or something, I send out love and hugs to them and say, hey, you know, I hope you feel better soon. And, and you know, if you need somebody to talk to, you can come talk to me, you know, stuff like that there I do. Lovely. Or I might buy a little trinket, say, if my family member's down or something, I might buy something really, not something real expensive, but something nice for them to show them I care. Yeah, showing that you care. Right. Showing that you care. Right. That's a good thing. Well, Mary, thank you so much. I'm glad you finally were able to make it on to the yeah, show. Yeah, I'm glad too, Chris. It's really good to meet Have you been you. watching for a while? Or you yes, I have. Yes, I have. Actually, Kim introduced me to this, and I'm so glad she did. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. Kim is a champion of the Pilates. She is. She and really is. Him, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, awesome. Well, a friend of Kim's is a friend of mine. Yeah. So, Mary, thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Thank. Nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go, guys. Um, okay, we are at the four forty-five minute. Um, let's see what Rita has to say. Lovely Rita, meet a maid. Oh, the world just shook. Rita, are you there? Hello, Rita. Coming in, Rita, 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 can you hear me? Rita, lovely Rita, Rita Mid. Huh, it says that we're connecting, but I don't see Rita. <laughs> Try you later, Rita. Because that's how it goes. Um, Jojo, I'm coming back to you, girl. If you're still out there watching and you want to jump on with me, it might be the only chance we get to see each other this whole time But I'm in Vancouver. Normally, Jojo it works on uh, mystery. Did you see Rita, Libby? Wait, people saw Rita? Oh, no. See, Instagram. Wi-Fi. Do you see JoJo then? Huh. Okay, hold on a second. Sorry, JoJo. I'm going to go back to Rita. Let me see something here. R-I-T-A. Emerson request. It's always the technical stuff. It's boring. It's like... Okay. It's there we go. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Rita. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm a little nervous because I've never done this before, and I'm not comfortable in front of an audience. It's Yes, it's a weird thing, and I appreciate you uh, jumping on 
live with me and I appreciate you dealing with the technical aspect of it and, and being patient with me. Where are you coming in from live? Uh, Indiana. Indiana. I love that. My best friend's daddy was from Indiana. What part? Yeah. For some reason on your side, it was spinning. So I went out and came back in. And when I did that, I lost you. So that was okay. probably my fault. Okay. It's anyway, okay. I'll keep it quick. I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. Please. Um, and, and then I'll answer whatever you want to ask me. But um, the first thing <laughs> is, I've been on from the very, very first one. Every single week. Um, I've been on, uh, sorry, my great nephew's here and he just got my attention. Um, I've been on from the very beginning and this has been an unbelievable blessing to me. Um, I live alone. Um, and so, you know, I don't have a lot of people connection. Um, I'm retired. Um, and so it's, this has just been really a, a godsend. Anyway, the other thing, I wanted to share is, uh, from a goodness perspective is you have some really amazing people as part of this community that have really been an outreach to me. Um, Kim is one, Seb is one, Samantha's one, um, Libby's one. It's just they have been, and I don't even know them, but I feel like I know them and I could reach out to them if I need a helping hand a positive thought or whatever to get through the day. But um, so you, you've really, you should be very proud of what you've pulled together because it's because of you and who you are that we've all come together like this from all over the world, um, sure, which is really amazing. Thank you, Rita. So thank you. to me, I've seen an amazing goodness from this. And I like your spirituality. I um, was raised a Catholic. Um, I feel like I'm a strong Christian and I, I read the Bible and I have the message. Um, so it's, it's just been really good for me. So I just wanted to share that. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Um, well, have you been okay? I mean, it sounds like you've got someone there now. So like during, I'm sure during the quarantine living alone was awful because you were just isolated and stuck, but yeah, has it gotten I'm a little isolated. better? I may have isolated most of the time. I just every once in a while get a chance to get, I have two great nephews in the area, eight and 12. And uh, once in a while I get to have them come over and the eight year old um, and I have a strong bond and I put up an early Christmas tree today with him. Um, we kind of do that every year. He helps me put up the Christmas tree. So that was a really good thing today. So Sounds good to me. So it's exactly. been a good day. Good. But good. yeah, so. I, I I actually beside I'm not really officially retired. I'm actually disabled retired. So um, I do have health issues I have to deal with. But generally speaking, I'm doing really really well, and this has been real positive. Mm, that's awesome. That you just made my heart feel so warm and good, Rita. Thank you for that. That was a real gift that you just gave me. It was a good thing. So thank you. Oh, and, thank you um, for letting me come on. I'm glad you did. You were. I was. I'm glad I went back, and you were supposed to be here today. So thank you. And yeah. um, please continue watching. And if you ever have something you want to add, or now that I know you and I've seen your face, um, you know, and I hope you're not as nervous having done what you just did. Is and, and in the future, just jump on any time you want. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, Rita. Be well. Stay safe. All stay right. healthy. Be good. Thank you very much. Bye. Do you do you cut me out or do I? <laughs> I'll cut you out. I'm gonna drop okay. you right now. Bye -bye, okay, girl. thank you. Bye. Um, there you go. There you go. Um okay. You didn't come to watch me whistle. Um, Seb, I'm coming at you. Come on, Sebby, bring it home, bring it home. Hello, Hello. Seb. how are you? I'm doing okay. You're doing okay this week? Yeah, well, I'm doing okay today. Yeah. Haven't been doing okay for like the rest of the week, but um, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. It's a process. That's good. I'm getting there. Yeah. I can't wait to see uh, you in 10 years. We're going to have a conversation. 
and you're going to be like, Chris, it was like being on a ship, lost at sea in the middle of a storm, and I couldn't see the horizon or the stars or anything. I just kept getting my rocked left and right, up and down. I was sick. And then when you get to that safe harbor, which you will get to, the story that you're going to have to tell is going to be so amazing. And so I'm excited for people like you just keep hanging in there, Sab, and keep walking the walk, yeah. and what you do. Um, I'll tell you something. I had a bunch of garbage in my life and, um, and I wanted, I wanted, and this garbage would always attack me, like in my thoughts and my quiet moments, it would be like the noise in my head. And I used to have this trail that I would go hiking on. And one day on the trail, I said, Lord, I said, I just want you to rip out every foothold, every thought, like all the way, just rip it out from the roots. And in place of those things, I want you to plant the trees that will bear the fruits of the spirit. Plant these giant trees that literally, that, that was how I took control of my thoughts. So that every time the negative speak would come in, I would just push that out and then start thinking about these giant, basically like the size of oak trees, but they were bearing fruit in my life. And I gotta be honest with you, that metaphor for me, like a hundred percent, I think about my life now as this giant orchard. I don't think- It's about actually it. it's actually funny that you should say that because I feel like that's exactly what the Chautauqua was doing for me as well. Yeah. And it's just like, I'll kind of, I'll think something, I'll feel something. And then there's all like, my brain kind of does oh, this is how we think about this. This is how we think about that. And then my head goes, no, that's not what we do anymore. We do this now. And um, earlier today, I was actually re-watching the episode on patience um, that we did. Um, and I felt it kind of actually sort of settling me down, like from the, the, the kind of um, turbulent, week um that, that it's been um and I, I was thinking of do you remember i think it was in the forgiveness episode when you were talking about like mold in the heart yeah. and stuff and i was kind of thinking like obviously like the, the the bigger picture of kind of like all of the fruits of the spirit and things and like each week we're kind of like zoning in on on one of them yeah. you know and so I keep thinking of like the bigger picture and like how that's kind of layering up and, and we're planting the seeds and letting them grow and things. Um, and when I was thinking about what goodness is, I was just kind of thinking it's not letting the mold grow in your heart. Yeah. And you know, it's, so it's clearing that kind of stuff out and yeah. I love that. I think that's a great, a great way to think about it, clearing the mold out. Um, yeah, so thank you, because, <laughs> like, literally, like, this is laying the foundation for, like, all of my healing, like, and I got, like, a rundown of what I'm going to be doing in therapy yeah. um, last week, and I wasn't, like, I was kind of, it was sort of what I expected, but then I wasn't necessarily, like, really scared about it, like, I knew I was going to be okay because I've got this, like, stronger foundation now. And I've got all these different kind of tools that I can use, like forgiveness and and peace and patience and stuff. And like, that's awesome. Deb, yeah. I wish I wish that I could take credit for it. Like, I wish I could stand here and be like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." But <laughs> Jesus, like Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's all. Well, I, thank I mean, you. I'm just I, I, like literally. I was looking at my life, and I make movies for a living, and I pretend to be other people, and you know, I got a joyful heart and I think God has his hand on me and he wants me to be in your life and he wants me to be in the life. Yeah. Of God. For that. By that I'm used. But um, the information I'm sharing is not mine. I wish I was, uh, I wish I was enlightened enough to be the originator of all of it. I could say, hey, but I'm not. I'm just a, That's I'm just a different a, kind of movie, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. a conduit. Um, so, but I'm so grateful for you because you honestly, and I haven't said this to you yet, um, but those those messages that you sent me over the summer while I was sitting in my my fancy hotel in England getting ready to work on Jurassic, um, you were really hurting. And it made me think if I'm going to start talking to people on a weekly basis, like, 
I don't have anything real to offer other than, I mean, the greatest thing about me is my faith. And the greatest thing about me is this sort of, uh, this work that the person, the, the entity that created you, created me and is doing in my life. Um, and so you have a, a small stake in this thing. And I love how you've reached out to people and the community that you guys have built, that Kim has built online, yeah. how powerful that group is. Um, it really is a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. And I'm proud of it. So thank you, Josh. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. Seth, hang in there. Yes, I will. I was on a boat in semester at sea, and I was on the Pacific Ocean, 30-foot swells. The boat went like this. The boat went like that. The boat, like you could literally, I would look up, and I'd see everything be above me, and then all of a sudden. That makes me seasick just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> you will make it through this. Yeah. And one day you're going to pull into that safe harbor and it's, it really will. It's going to be this amazing story that you're going to have to share with people. So keep Thank going. you. All right. I will. I promise. Okay. Bye. Um, be good this week. I'll talk to you soon. I will. Bye. Bye. Um, that's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. All right. We've got literally, yeah, we've got three minutes, two minutes left. So now it's time to say goodbye and go eat some pizza pie. We're gonna get some pizza with the Caesar salad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just clowning. Guys, um, I do like this thing. I, I'm, I'm, I, um, I do love the community that you have built. This is you. It's on you. Um, I just happen to, I just happen to be the lucky guy who 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 uh, caught a tiger by the tail. So um, I appreciate you all, and I really, really hope that you have a blessed week. I'm gonna pray for you real quick. I'm gonna send you off into the wild, wild world to be healthy and to be safe. Lord, I lift up everybody who's watching this right now. I lift them up that they will be good people that they will focus on good things, good thoughts, saying good words, doing good deeds, that they'll be patient with one another, kind to one another, that they will have a peace that surpasses all understanding, that there will be a spirit of forgiveness that washes over them in their own lives, that they'll have a reset button in order to feel worthy of doing good and being good. I lift all of this up in your awesome and powerful name, the name of Jesus, for me, um, for the universe, and uh, amen. If you say amen to that, give a little heart on the tick, tick, tick. And then, yeah, that's it. All right, guys. Bye-bye.